Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. And here's a video I've wanted to talk about for a while because I get a ton of questions about this. And that is, what is the best way to set up our power cab to get the best out of it? One complaint I hear a lot about the power cab through questions to me directly and reading online is that people say, it's just not loud enough. I can't get it to sit over top of the band. It's not working for me, out it goes, you know? And a lot of times what's happening is we just simply are not setting it up properly. Cause let me tell you, the power cab is very loud, uh, has the potential to be very loud if set up properly. So I wanted to go through a video uh, to show you kind of the absolute best way to get the most out of this. I'll be working in conjunction with the Helix here. Uh, and we can kind of hopefully get some of you folks who may find that they're not getting the best out of it to actually get the best out of it. So first things first, what about the settings on our Helix? That's what we have to worry about, number one. Now, the, the power cab is expecting to see a line level signal. For the first thing we wanna do is go in global settings and set whatever output we have feeding the power cab. Uh, whether it be XLR, quarter inch, ascend, uh, whatever we might be using, we wanna set that to line level. I have videos in the past where I've talked about the, the proper setup in that department, but we set that to line level. Another question I get a lot is where I set my big knob, my big master volume knob. And quite simply, I set that on full all the time. I don't think I've turned that down in since I've had the Helix. That's always up. Okay, full. And that way I don't have to worry about it. It's just, one, you know, we have enough places where we have to worry about kind of gain staging and, and uh, getting levels correct and, and so many potential areas where we can boost and cut volumes. Last thing we need is another one to worry about. Turn your volume knob up full and leave it. And then worry about setting your volumes within your preset. And that's just gonna be a lot easier in my estimation. I know some others do it different. That's the way I do it. So those are the two things I would say to get started with. Now let's go over here to HX Edit. Now, just as a little uh, preface to how I'm set up, I am set up with uh, going into my Power Cab 112 Plus, which you can see. I'm sorry if that camera is a little bit dark. I think it's good enough to see what we need to see for this video, which is mostly going to be the little LED light but I am going into that digitally via the L6 link, okay? So using an L6 link cable, um, which allows me also then to go to my output block and control some of the power cab from here, right? Um, I can uh, you know, set it from flat mode to speaker mode, flat voicing, FRFRF, LF flat, LF raw. For this, I'm just mostly talking about getting the levels going into the uh, power cab set correctly. I'm not really gonna get into talking about whether it should be set up as an FRFR or whether it should be set up as a speaker. In this, I'm using an FRFR. Uh, that's gonna be up to you depending on how you want to use it. So we're really not talking about any of these. I'm leaving all of these as they are, flat level zero, high cut off, low cut off. Uh, we can set the color of, of the knob from here as you see it changing. Pretty neat stuff actually, but we're not gonna be talking about that. We're just gonna be talking about getting the level set proper because I think that's the problem that most folks actually have with it. Okay, so starting off here, what I have is just a very simple preset. I have uh, a jazz chorus model in here. It's turned off right now. Uh, I need to use that in a second. But other than that, we're just going guitar straight through uh, on, a, on basically an empty path here. And over here I have Cubase where I'm recording my guitar. Any guitar sounds you're hearing here in here don't have anything to do with the power cab. This is just coming out of the Helix Direct. We're, there's no real need to hear what's coming of, out of the power cab for this video. But what I wanna do is use the monitoring, both the um, DBFS peak meter, which also contains an RMS root mean square, just as the average uh, level, and also the LUFS loudness meters. And I've done, I did a video in the past about, you know, balancing uh, the levels in your patches from patch to patch sort of thing, from preset to preset, uh, using the integrated loudness uh, LUFS meter, and it works quite nicely, although in the end you still have to balance with your ears. But I'm gonna give you a couple tips that I find work for me, if you're dialing in your presets on with your DAW or with your meters, you can also use other loudness meters. There's Orban loudness meter out there. I think that's a free one. Uh, if you're dialing in your presets at a certain level, it would help to know how that relates to what we want going into the power cab. And then we don't even need our power cab on. We can dial in a preset knowing it's gonna be optimized already 
for the power cab. Okay, so one word about some of the power cab settings. If we go over to the power cab, and let me just show you this right now. If we come in here and press our home button, what comes up are the global settings. If you notice, the first two global settings are input one gain, input two gain. So we do have an ability to boost the input level going into the power cab from the power cab itself. Personally, I don't really use that ever. There's a couple reasons why. I did a little test where, uh, and there's 12 dB of gain, extra input gain on the power cab. I did a little test where I cranked up the input gain with a sort of a lower volume preset. Let's just take this for instance, where I have nothing going uh, on in this preset path. It's, it's Right, if we look on our meters, if I strum this fairly hard, I can peak out up around minus nine, but if I'm just playing normally. You know, my peak is around minus 15-ish, my RMS is about minus 30. On the power cab, I could go to the power cab and boost up a whole bunch of input level to get those lights, uh, you know, going up on, um, the power cab, but I actually found when I was plugged in via just a, a quarter inch or an XLR, when I did that, the signal to noise ratio suffered. So I did a little experiment with the preset where, with an amp on it, and I did 12 dB of extra gain there, and I measured the noise coming out of the power cab with an SPL meter. And then I did the same thing where keeping the input level on zero on the power cab and boosting 12 dB of output on the final output block on the Helix right here. And I measured that with the sound pressure level meter. When I boosted the input level 12 dB on the power cab, I got three dB more sound pressure level of noise, just hiss and noise. So the signal to noise ratio was not as good. You know, I'm sure if you didn't go that dramatic and you just boosted a dB or two because you needed to, uh, you know, for, for whatever purpose, it's not gonna do any damage. But I tend to just leave those alone set at zero and deal with dialing in the amount of signal coming out of my preset. So I hope that helps. So master volumes on full, we're set to line level. Let's just take a quick look at what the manual says, the PowerCab 112 and 212 plus manual. It has this thing here, it says number two, signal LEDs indicates the overall level of the sound as it's processed through the system. Green indicates the presence of an input signal. Okay, so if we see right now, that's what we have. If I turn my guitar up, right? Um, yellow indicates that it is approaching the upper limit and red indicates clipping. If you encounter clipping, try turning down the level of the source device, your amp modeling device. When the signal LEDs turn yellow, this is very important, the power cab speaker system will have the most realistic, non-linear, natural breakup characteristics. Okay, so interesting stuff there. Um, so what it's basically telling you is if you want this to kind of work in the way it was designed, we want those LEDs kind of working in the yellow range, not getting into the red too much because we're in danger of clipping. Again, we got to use our ears though, and I'll show you something with that in a minute. Um, but if we're not in the yellow, if we're too much in the green, let's say, we're not maximizing our signal to noise ratio, okay? Our signal is going to be closer to kind of the noise floor of the power cab. So getting it in the yellow is our goal as is stated in the manual. Now, about the red indicator. It's funny, and I'm gonna show some examples of this. You know, the red coming on every now and then is not the end of the world. The, the manual says it indicates clipping, but when we use our ears, and I've, I've really, and I'll show you, driven it into the red, it takes quite a bit going into the red before we actually get this clipping, although we don't wanna get too close for no reason, right? So, but just knowing that if we're seeing the odd little flash of red, it's not the end of the world, okay? Uh, so, all right, so here we are. Um, as I was saying, a lot of folks sometimes use just their bypass signal to set levels. The reason I don't like to do that, the, the bypass straight guitar tone is a very transient rich <laughs> uh, signal, right? Meaning we get a lot of peaks, right? The sort of initial attack. When we run the signal through an amp or an amp model, whether clean or distorted, uh, it tends to compress that a little bit, okay? The peaks uh, and the average level 
come closer together. So I find what happens when using just this clean signal like this, we get our peak, our average is quite low, then we put an amp on, uh, the, the sort of range from peak to, to the average level is quite different. So we might as well just set our levels using an amp model already. Now, what I would do though, and that's why, and this is an interesting experiment. If I look at my peak and RMS meters here, and I play, just kind of normally, I, I'm running around minus 14, minus 13 and a half on my peaks. My average level is about minus 29. That's the max of that. We see kind of 16 to 17 dB of difference there. What happens when I put an amp model on? And this is a very clean sound. And these are the settings that just come up stock on the jazz chorus model. Let's take a look now at the difference between the peak and the average. We go from about minus 13 to about minus 27-ish. So we have about 14 dB of difference. Again, if we go here with it off, right, we have about 16 dB of difference roughly. And with it on, we get a little bit closer between our peak and our average. A more realistic scenario. So what we want to do when we're setting our levels is we want to kind of use our cleanest sound because that's going to have more transient information than let's say I come in here and I pick a, a, an amp and a cab that are going to be much more distorted. Let's go with a, a Brit Plexi Norm. I'll just throw a 120 ribbon on it. And now we're going to have this tone. Okay, so now we look here and we go. If we notice now, the difference between our peaks and our RMS now is only about 11 dB, right? And something else interesting, if we look at our peaks here in our RMS with the clean sound, our RMS is around minus 27, our peak is at minus 12. We go to the distorted sound, Our RMS is about the same, but our peaks come down because the distortion compresses the sound. So if we use this to set, a distorted sound to set the level of the power cab, and then we switch to a clean sound, those extra peaks from the transients of the clean sound could potentially clip the power cab. So it's best to go in and use the clean sound to set the levels. Okay, so one thing then, we can, we can simply do it like this. We can go out to our output, here, which is set at zero dB. Um, and we can raise this up until we see the yellow start to come in. Okay, so let's do that. We see it coming in there. Now I'm gonna hit really hard and see if I can get the red to come on. There you go. So if I'm really playing hard, which I'm not usually gonna do, I get a little bit of peaking in the red. This is probably a decent level. Kind of maximize what we're getting out of the power cab without being too close to clipping. But if you noticed, even when I went into the red, there I don't hear, and you're not hearing what I'm hearing in the room, I didn't hear any clipping, okay? So we have a little bit of headroom there. Let's see how far we have to go though to get clipping, okay? If you notice here now on my peak meter, I'm around minus 6.7. I have that much headroom before I start clipping within my DAW. So let's do this. Let's add another 6 dB, roughly. See what our peak meters do here. So we're very close. Now, on the power cab, The red is on almost constantly, but you know what, in the room here, I'm still not hearing it clip. So that's kind of nice to know. I'm not saying we should go here because we're in a bit of a danger zone here. So what we do know though, is if I'm over here at minus four, like I had it before with the odd little red light coming on. If I really dig into it, 
I've got a, an amount of headroom here that I can go that I'm still not going to really have to worry about clipping. Even if I added another dB, let's say. <laughs> The red comes on a little more, but it still sounds fine. But that's okay. I think, you know, at that point, if we were here, let's say around plus four, we're going to be fine. So let's do something interesting now. Let's go over to the loudness meter, which is the type of meter that I used before when talking about balancing our presets, you know, to get consistent volume across our presets. Let's see what happens on the integrated meter here as I play, kind of just normally, maybe slightly hard. If I really dig in, I get up around minus 16, 16.6. .6. But if you noticed, as I just played kind of more normal. Even normal to maybe slightly harder, in and around minus 18 or so on the LUFS meter. This is actually the meter I use all the time. Because here's the thing, I can go back to my peak meter and say, well, was I in a danger zone there? Not at all. I'm still around 8 dB of headroom before those, those peaks will possibly clip, even on a clean sound. Okay, so how does that then uh, work if we go to a distorted sound? Well, the nice thing about the LUFS is it is perceived loudness as to what we hear. So if I turn this off and turn my distorted sound on, let's see what we get as an LUFS reading. down around minus 20.8, minus 21. So I'm gonna come to my channel volume. I don't wanna mess around with my output volume. I could just come and boost it here, but then that's also gonna change what I just set up over here on my jazz chorus, right? Uh, and this is all gonna depend on what your preset is like. I've just done a couple of videos on gain staging that kind of will help you if you have a more complex system. But let, let's just bump this up to a, I don't know, 6.1 and see what we have. <laughs> We're now at that same sort of perceived loudness as the jazz chorus was, and what's happening over our power cap? I can't even get it to clip there, simply because we don't have those transient spikes that are coming from the clean. So let's do this. Let's set up, you know, snapshot two here to have the Marshall amp on and Snapshot 1 to have the Roland Jazz Chorus on. Okay, so they have a really close perceived loudness. Whether that's what you want or not is up to you. You could come in and balance them a little more. You know you have a little more headroom here if you need it, right? If you want it to go a little more on your distorted sound, what if I bump this up to seven? We get this perceived loudness of... Around minus 15, what's happening over on the power cap? I'm getting the odd little red light clip on, but I'm not hearing any distortion or clipping, okay? But again, we're getting closer to a danger zone there, and that's obviously gonna be louder than the jazz chorus is now, okay? One little word though, I'm going into the Power Cab 112. Uh, going into the Power Cab 212, um, I can actually add somewhere in the department of maybe two or three dB more before it goes into clipping. Not really sure why that is. I mean, it's a different unit altogether. So um, when I do my Line 6 Marketplace presets, for instance, I have a little um, Marketplace manual I put in there and I tell folks that I target mine for minus 15 LUFS with my guitar and my setup, which happens to be the Power Cab 212 when I'm doing balancing or setting those levels. So, you know, if, if you're using a Power Cab 112 and you find that that's clipping a little bit, then you go to the output block, you dial that back, maybe 3 dB, and you're gonna be in good shape. So just keep in mind that 
the difference between the PowerCab 112 and 212, there seems to be a bit of a difference on how much signal we need to get it to sort of that place. And again, you know, as long as we're not clipping and we're up in that upper register, we're probably going to be all right. So then, one thing that I know, if we have our Orban loudness meter, or I'm using Cubase here, and we have our LUFS meter on, I find it pretty safe that for the PowerCab 112, if we aim for kind of an integrated loudness as we're playing normally around minus 18, minus 18 and a half, that preset is gonna translate beautifully to the PowerCab and we're in really good shape. We don't have to worry about it. It's just kind of gonna work, right? Um, and that's, again, with our master volume on full, set to line level, right? Very important. On the PowerCab 212, I find I can go up to around minus 15 LUFS and it's perfectly fine. And if you find with your system that, you know, you prefer it at minus 19 or minus 20, well, make that mental note and just know that that's the range that works for you and what you want to get. But this is the way, by avoiding the input level on our power cab, by keeping our master volume big knob control on 10, setting our global output to line level feeding into the power cab, what I just described is the way that we can maximize our signal to noise ratio, have the speaker working within the power cab, how it was designed to work, and just generally get the most out of our power cab. We're going to now get the most volume. When we go turn our volume control up on our power cab, we're gonna get all that volume we need. And I've done shows with it where I was playing with guys playing Marshall half stacks, playing loud heavy metal music, and the power cab was just cutting right through. Okay, so no problem with that if we set it up right. I hope that was helpful, and I think that was an important video to make. I've had a lot of questions about that over the, over the last year, even a couple of years, how, when, however long the power cabs have been out. So I wanted to clear a few of those things up, and I hope that really helps some folks to, to be able to get the most out of their power cab, and even dialing in their presets. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I will be back soon. Please like the video, share it if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back very soon. Thanks again. Ciao for now.